Welcome back to Coding with Kiskit Runtime. I'm your host, Nick Braun. In this video, we'll explore the variational quantum eigensolver with Kiskit Runtime and learn what kinds of options we can set for the primitives. To learn more about how the VQE algorithm works, check out this video. In this example, we'll run a full variational algorithm instead of just calculating the molecular energy for an optimized set of parameters as we did in the previous video. Because of that, let's choose a simpler molecule for demonstration, molecular hydrogen. From hydrogen, import poly operator. H2 op equals poly operator. And then we'll print it. H2 op. This is a two qubit observable. And you can see that the first four observables commute with each other, but XX does not commute with either IZ or ZI. So we will need two sets of compatible measurements which the estimator will take care of for us. We can diagonalize this operator exactly. Import numpy as np, then min eigen exact equals min np.lin alg dot eigvals of a Hermitian operator h2 op.2 matrix. Let's import all the other necessary libraries from kiskit.algorithms.optimizers import SPSA, the Simultaneous Perturbation Stochastic Approximation, a good optimizer for noisy environments. From kiskit.circuit.library import efficient SU2. This will be our ansatz, and we're choosing it because it's a hardware-efficient two-local circuit. From kiskit.primitives import estimator. We'll import from the base class, since we'll first run the VQE on the state vector simulator. And now instantiate these. Estimator equals estimator. Ansatz equals efficient SU2 on two qubits. Let's take a look at our ansatz. ansatz.decompose.draw.draw dot dot draw MPL. We see it consists of three layers of parameterized Y and Z rotations, with C knots as the entanglers. Before instantiating the optimizer, let's build a callback function. We'll use a lambda function. Callback equals lambda. And then for SPSA, the parameters are in this order, the number of function evaluations, n, f, e, v, the parameters, params, the function value, f, val, the step size, step, and whether the step was accepted, accepted. We'll just print the number of function evaluations and the function value here. and fev f val. And we'll put the callback in our optimizer. Optimizer equals SPSA, callback equals callback, and we'll set the maximum number of iterations to 1,000. Max iter equals 1,000. Finally, we write our cost function. This is where the estimator meets the optimizer cost func equals lambda on params. Estimator dot run on sots h2 op parameter values equals params. And then we'll get the result of that and the first value is what the energy is. Each call to the cost function makes a call to the estimator, which the optimizer will attempt to minimize over, with result equals optimizer dot minimize cost func. It will also print our intermediate values of our callback. We'll start with the initial state of all zeros, x0 equals np dot zeros, on sots dot num parameters. 
We see the results of our callback. Let's look at the optimization result. Print result. We see our minimum function value of about minus 1.857. 3,000 function evaluations corresponding to 1,000 iterations. This number is three times bigger because each iteration consists of two evaluations for the gradient and one for the energy estimate. Finally, we have the optimal parameters that give us the lowest energy estimate. This is exactly what my friends provided me in the estimator example of the previous episode. Let's compare our optimized energy to what we got from exact diagonalization. Print min eigen exact. We see results agree very well when simulated by a state vector simulator. Now let's do this for real. Running on real hardware gives a number of options, so we import that from Qiskit IBM Runtime. From Qiskit IBM Runtime, import options. We instantiate options equals options. And then we can set options.execution.execution init qubits to true, which will initialize the qubits to the zero state. We can set options.execution.shots to 5,000, for example. And then we can set environment options. Options.environment.callback. This is discussed in episode 7. This callback is used for probabilistic error cancellation, which we will not be doing here. Options.environment.jobtags. This is good for data reproducibility and storing. Options.environment.loglevel. Options equals debug. This flag is used for debugging on the IBM Quantum Platform. Next, we instantiate our runtime service and retrieve a backend from Qiskit IBM Runtime. Import Qiskit Runtime Service. Service equals Qiskit Runtime Service. Backend equals service.get back end, and we'll use IBM Logos. We can use the same callback and optimizer instantiation from before, but we need to take care to create a new cost function with the estimator primitive from Qiskit IBM Runtime. Let's import that and the session class. From Qiskit IBM Runtime, import estimator session. Then we enter the session context with session service equals service, backend equals backend as session. We instantiate the estimator with the hardware options. Estimator equals estimator, options equals options. Build the cost function in exactly the same way, but with the new estimator, cost func equals lambda, on params, estimator.run, on sots, h2 operator, parameter values equals params. Want the result of that, and the first value is the energy. And then our result. Result equals optimizer.minimize. Cost function with the starting point all zeros. Zeros on sots dot num parameters. This is running on real hardware, so this will take some time. But I've reproduced the results from a previous run here. And when the job is done, display the results of the calculation. Print result. The result of minus 1.777 is a little higher than the exact value of minus 1.857, which is the expected of simulations on noisy hardware. Let's plot the convergence relative to the exact value. To do this, we'll retrieve all our data from the IBM Quantum Platform. 
We will need the session ID, which we can retrieve from the session itself or the jobs list on the IBM Quantum platform. If we had stored the estimator run in a job, we could also retrieve it from there. Jobs equals service dot jobs session ID equals session dot session ID. Limit equals none. Energies equals job dot result dot values gives us the energy for job and jobs if job.done is true. And this, since this give us, gives us the jobs in most recently run, we want to reverse it so we can see the convergence as a function of time. Minus 1 will reverse the list. Now we can plot our convergence with matplotlib. Import matplotlib.com pi plot as plt, plt.style.use, dark background, because of course. And then plt.plot will use a range on the length of the energies as our x-axis. Our energies will be plotted against that. And we'll label it with backend. And then we'll compare it to our exact values. So plot dot plot range on the length of energies again. Then we'll plot our minimum eigenvalue exactly times length energies. And we'll give that a dashed line and label it exact. We always label our axes, so the x label is going to be iteration. And our y label is going to be energy. And we'll plot the legend. Here we can see convergence of the energy as the variational quantum algorithm is run. And we see it converges nearly to the exact value at about iteration 270 or 80 or so. In the next video, we take a look at error suppression and error mitigation techniques using runtime to reduce the effect of noise on our calculations. Thanks for watching. See you then.